Oh boy, guys, you know, I really thought I was gonna be surprised with this event, but when Samsung leaks their own shit on purpose, there's no surprise, there's no shock or anything. So Samsung, you are probably one of the dumbest companies when it comes to expectations and surprises, because you leak your own shit. Not only does your marketing suck, but your actual team sucks. Your product, on the other hand, that's a different story. But, <laughs> I'm not gonna bash Samsung just yet. I'm not gonna bash anybody today. We're gonna discuss the whole Samsung uh, live event, and I'm gonna talk about my thoughts and my opinion on what I believe of Samsung's new line of their next-gen products. So, stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everybody? Michael here. Welcome back to another video. And if you guys haven't known by now, the Galaxy event is pretty much over. Uh, I am currently re-watching a rerun, just so I can, uh, you know, catch up on some things that I might have missed. And I gotta tell you, you know, the Samsung Galaxy lineup is really, really interesting. And I gotta tell you, it's kind of cool. Um, I originally looked at it and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna switch from my iPhone. I'm just happy with what I got. But when I look at this stuff and I see what Samsung's producing, I gotta admit, as much as we like to talk shit about them, <laughs> guys, come on, they make some pretty cool ass the products. The only problem is that they leak their own shit, so there's no surprise there. But let's start off with the big start of the event. That was the Galaxy Fold. They officially unveiled their 10 year anniversary phone, something like that, and it was the Galaxy Fold. And that Galaxy Phone we've already seen concepts of, but we finally saw it in the flush. And I gotta tell you, I like the concept, I like the idea of a foldable device, but my problem was execution and my thoughts was who would want to use something like this. So we saw it and I gotta tell you, it kind of wasn't what I was expecting, but at the same time something I was expecting. So we saw it. So basically it is a phone and a tablet all in one. It folds together obviously to form a phone, which is I believe a 4.6 inch phone, very small screen. But when you open it up, it gives you a nice 7 point something inch uh, AMOLED display. I could be wrong because the facts, uh, it passed the event. But regardless of that, the thing that was the selling point was it was foldable, it had an AMOLED, and it had a brand new hinge in the middle that is seamless when you flex it. And it, was, it, it looked pretty cool, I gotta tell you. Um, but the one thing I loved was the crowd's reaction. Now, if you guys know by now, I hate Apple's fans. Uh, I don't hate them, but whenever I watch an event, I hate when they just woo for the stupidest thing. Like, some anything Apple says, there's always a woo woo woo. I was like, what the fuck are you wooing for? They're not gonna benefit you. You're a fucking sheep. You're just gonna spend your money. No offense to any Apple fanboys out there. But the thing that really made me laugh so, so much was anytime Apple would unveil something, whenever their prices were announced or anything at all, they just stayed quiet. But in this event, when they unveiled the price of the foldable phone, the crowd went, what? Well, they didn't really say what, but they went, what? Like you could hear their reaction and I freaking loved it. This was what I was hoping for. Samsung, you got a pair of fucking balls trying to sell people a thousand, a two thousand dollar device. Oh my god. <laughs> now, to be fair, and also I do this a lot with my hands, I don't know why I'm doing that. But to be fair, it does offer a lot of innovation for what it's offering. It does keep a headphone jack, so you guys cannot complain. Um, it has three cameras, two in the front, three in the back, and then one on the inside. And on top of that, it also is again a tablet and a phone in one but for $1900 with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage I don't know what they're thinking but hey if they think they're gonna make money off this product <laughs> oh boy oh, Sam. then let's get into the main part of the show the Samsung Galaxy S10, S10 Plus and S10e and I gotta tell you the S10 Plus looks absolutely gorgeous the new screen was awesome to see. It was nice how they made the phone. And with the whole punch design that they're going for, it really looks awesome. No matter what you say, no matter what you can say, their design is honestly awesome. It's not bad at all. 
and the S10 also takes one whole punch, where the S10 Plus takes two, and on top of all that, they really went all out, like they really did a lot to try to make this event kind of awesome. The S10e is again what we've all known, so I don't really need to go into depth, but we already know about the stuff, so I mean, hey. But moving on, the S10 and S10 Plus both feature a uh, three camera lens setup, uh, both with a wide angle and I believe a regular telephoto lens and also the zoom. So you get three camera setup, and then for the Plus model, you get two front-facing cameras, and they showed off a bunch of cool tricks with them. There, and also they mentioned fucking Bixby. Like, oh my god, can we just time out for just one second, Samsung? You mentioned Bixby so goddamn much. Like, can you just give up on the damn thing? Nobody uses Bixby. Even your fucking Galaxy Buds suck. Well, I'm not saying the headphones themselves, but integrating them with fucking like what? But anyway, then we get to the S10e, their budget device where they hope to make all the cash and bang on it. Now, I looked at the phones and I thought for a second they were taking the same material that they made the iPhones out of with a stainless steel band and all that kind of stuff. But it looks like it's just aluminum and a nice shine to the glass. And the prices, get ready, $749 for the S10e, $899 for the regular um, S10, and $999 for the Plus. Now, you're probably about to say, but aren't you going to flip out? Well, here's the thing. That is the exact price the iPhone XS and XS Max should have been priced at. Finally, somebody understands. Look, I get it, you know, $1,000 should not be a phone. That shouldn't even be a phone price, period. But at least, at least the regular size model at the 5.8 inch size is at least, thank God they got that right with $899. And you get some pretty hefty specs, I gotta tell you. You can spec it up to 12 gigabytes, but God knows how much that configuration will be. That'll be just as much as the foldable phone. But the idea that they did the prices right. Now, I don't, like, personally, look, I don't agree with spending $1,000 for a phone. And look, I don't think we're ever gonna see that disappear for at least a while. But there's a lot of justifications in this device that will kind of justify the purpose of buying this device for that price point, the base configuration. If you wanna put more RAM, you wanna put more storage, but here's my thing though, if Apple can make their stuff work perfectly without having to use that much RAM and stuff, that just shows how much far ahead Apple is in performance. So I can't, like, I'm not trying to be bashing here, but like guys, if you need 12 gigabytes of, store, of RAM and one terabyte of storage, go buy a laptop. Like why are you buying a phone for? So like Apple, I give points on that, but at least they got the prices right. At least they got that right. They also, it seemed as from what I was able to see, it looked like the headphone jack was there. I gotta check it out, but some are saying it's not. I'm gonna check it out for myself, and if it is there, uh, then I say, ha, told you so, but if it's not there, then you guys are right. But anyway, so that was it for the 10, 10 Plus, and the 10E, but then we got into the, um, the Galaxy Buds. Now these are basically just buds that are gonna rival Apple's AirPods, but Apple's AirPods 2 is supposed to be coming out, and... I don't know what to think about that. I, I thought they were okay. You know, they're just standard earbuds, of course, with the goddamn Bixby. But the cool thing was the sound quality comes from AKG. Now, if you guys don't know who AKG is, they're like the best uh, manufacturers for um, for Samsung. And I believe AKG does make some really good products. So sound quality on that. And the price is not too bad. 129, and they wirelessly charge on the phones. And that was another thing. Uh, now the phone has what Huawei's doing, backwards wireless charging so you can charge another device and you can charge the buds on the thing so that's pretty cool and i'll give it credit and also with the earbuds when you connect them when you open it up it has a similar style to airpods since it's linked up now to galaxy now i don't know if it's only for galaxy phones only but i'll take a look at that and i gotta tell you they don't look too bad they're in ear they have six hour battery life and the case i don't know how much that had i think it might have like a 24 hour charge it depends but Regardless, it is a cool uh, pair of earbuds. Then we get to the Galaxy Watch and the Galaxy Fit. They're redesigned, um, band, whatever, God knows what, and to be fair, look, it's just a smartwatch, and at the time of this recording, that is where the live stream is. I know I said by the time you see the video, the event was over, but I'm still in the process of watching it. So I'm gonna stop the video, and I'm gonna get back into it, and I'll get back to you after they finish the watch, and then I'll get into it with, if they unveil anything else. So I'm gonna pause the video, and get back to it.
All right, so they just finished up the watch, and bro, if you guys didn't watch that stream, the guy messed up so bad, bro. They tried to do the wireless thing, and oh my god, what a big fail. We're gonna see memes on that tonight or tomorrow. But then they had talked about the watch. They talked about how the Galaxy Watch is a premium version, then you have the Fit where you can track your health, and then you got something called the Tab. Nobody gives a shit about that. But the prices are not too bad, I actually gotta say. Uh, compared to what Apple wants for a smartwatch, given that, you know, Apple has their stuff in tune with their stuff, the Galaxy Watch is priced at $199. No matter what you get, you, the Fit version is $99, and the Tab, I believe, is somewhere in the 50 something. Um, now, uh, I believe we're near the end of the thing, so as soon as this finishes, I'm going to get back and give my final thoughts, cap up everything. So that's going to do it for this part. Let's finish this video. Alright, event over. So finally, <laughs> the last thing they unveiled was the Galaxy S10 5G. Now, they spent a whole thing talking about the 5G era, and they're saying they have the phone equipped with 5G. The S10 S10 Plus are not, but this phone is... Uh, it is pretty much the same as the S10 Plus with a little more screen, a little more battery. They didn't really give a price point for it, but I can tell you right now it's going to be a thousand plus. But at least you know it's a 5G phone. But look, that was the Galaxy event. Um, overall, what did I think of it? I like uh, uh, Samsung's ambitions. I really do actually like what they're trying to do. They came out with many different devices, all with unique and impressive features. Even with some retaining some, they had much to give. And this is what I'm talking about with Apple. You need to be innovative like this. You can't keep carrying cheap designs and putting one or two things. You gotta innovate. You gotta bring back the whole fun of Apple. Look at when you did the 3GS to the 4, that redesign, that nice glass back the camera, the retina display, things like that. And what Samsung was able to do, even I don't like their price points, and I'll break that crap down as we go along, at least they're able to come up with products that are innovative and unique and have variations of things that you could have done, but you didn't do it. And I'm not saying this is Apple's fault. It's not anybody's fault. Look, they may not have the technology yet. It's not their business, but if you're gonna keep carrying the same design, you're not gonna push a 5G phone, or you're not gonna do any of that stuff, what is the point of releasing a device for $1,000 that doesn't have anything to offer for that $1,000 price point? At least a 5G phone, if that's a thousand plus, you can make one argument, 5G, and it has everything in the 10, 10 plus. Now, I don't know if they have stereo speakers. I actually do like stereo speakers, but look, my final thoughts. I admire Samsung's ambitions to try to want to reinvent and innovate, but you're taking things from companies from China that have already done. So you're not innovating as it is at the moment. However, you're doing it in a different style for the United States, and that is one thing I admire, is that you're trying to get these features into America, and you're doing it in the best way. So I give prop to Samsung. I really love their devices. The prices are not bad at all. I gotta say, I thought they were gonna be more from what I heard. But you know something? It doesn't look that bad. So I'll give Samsung props. They definitely had a great impact on this. So that is my final thoughts. Uh, but I wanna hear from you guys. What did you think of the Galaxy Unpack 2019? Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what did you think of it. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you dislike something I said in this video, write down in the comments. If you agree with me, let me know. As always, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and peace.